guys, it's Kevin again, my review for The Turning. So what The Turning essentially about is we center on this character of Kate. She is, I believe, a college student, but she needs to apply for a summer job. So she decides to take this job as a live-in nanny to these two extremely bratty kids. And, uh, you know, she thinks it's going to be very easy at first, but very quickly, it's clear that there is another demonic presence at play. Something in this house is haunting her, and uh, very slowly she starts to realize that she needs to protect these kids way more than she thought she needed to. So the turning overall, I was not really looking forward to this, uh, just for the very fact that it's a horror movie in January, and it just looked like the most generic kind. Uh, everything about this just looked like textbook you know, January horror movie. It looked very disposable and things like that. It had some actors that I really did like, though, and that did keep me having some kind of promise. But just overall, uh, what it looked like it was going to be, it just looked very generic to me. And I have to say, coming out of it, that's pretty much exactly what this is, except it's even worse. The Turning is easily one of the uh, most lazily written and also one of the most poor excuses for a horror film that I have seen in a very long time. We're just getting to right now, starting off with the cast. And to be honest here, I don't really have a lot to add uh, with this movie. Mackenzie Davis uh, is an actress that I really do respect quite a bit. I usually love her in everything. Here, she's fine. She's just kind of fine. I wouldn't say she's bad, but she's just fine. There are moments where she does do a good job, and I think she does slightly elevate the material, but the problem is there's just not a lot for her to work with here. She very quickly just falls into the trappings of a typical sort of naive, wide-eyed sort of uh, main character we expect to see in a movie like this, and... Unfortunately, there's just not enough for her to really show her true range as an actress. And that's very disappointing because even in films that are mediocre, like Dark Fate last year, she was far and away the best thing about that film. She was amazing in that movie. And here, there just isn't really a lot for her to do. And then Finn Wolfhard, I don't know what's going on with him recently, but he is terrible here. I really did not buy him in this role at all. I thought he was so over the top top and just cringy and I don't know what he was trying to go for here but it, it just his angstiness was not working at all it just really annoyed me and anytime he came on screen he just ruined whatever scene he was in and I really do like Finn Wolfhard as an actor but holy shit between this and the goldfinch he has not been doing it for me recently and I, I hope this is not a sense in decline as an actor I hope that's not where he's going I hope he's not one of those child actors that like starts off really great and then as he gets older he just starts to decline and I hope that's not the case for him because I really do appreciate him as an actor I think he's a really great child actor and just recently he has not been doing it for me Brooklyn Prince, I think, does the best she can with this material. She's similar to The Florida Project, playing a very annoying character. But here, it's not like in the sense where, you know, she's trouble. This is just an annoying little girl, and she does the best she can do with that role. Her and Davis do have some pretty good chemistry. Uh, I would say she probably is the best of the three performances. I think she overall did do the best of what she had. Uh, but overall, the cast leaves a lot to be desired. These are some very talented actors and they're just not utilized all the well here which is very disappointing to say the least but now we get to the directing and the writing which this is really when we get into the stuff that really brings this entire film down the directing of this movie is just so lazily handled they really just don't know what they want this movie to be do they want this to be something more psychological or do they want it to be more of a straight up just generic horror film they don't really seem to know there are parts of this movie that feels like it's trying to be something art housey but then there's parts of it that feels like it's trying to be something far more just mainstream and i, I just don't really Really think the directing was very good here it didn't really feel like there was a specific voice on this film that like knew what they wanted it to be um but I don't really know if I attribute that so much to the directing as I do to the writing because oh my god this screenplay is such a train wreck um I mean look 
the first, I would say, hour and, um, you know, hour, hour or so of this movie is not terrible. It's not terrible to the point where you hate yourself. It's more just really boring. There's a lot of buildup in this movie, and that's really what a lot of this movie is. It starts off, and, you know, Kate, she's with, um... Brooklyn Prince's character, uh, Flora, who for some reason has this crippling fear of, like, not wanting to leave her house, so she has to constantly do all of these ridiculous activities with her, and then you have, uh, Finn Wolfhard's character, Miles, who is just a constant, just angsty kid throughout, he's just causing all this trouble, saying the weirdest, like, disgusting shit to her, um, he might even maybe have, like, a, like, he has, like, an attraction to her or something, I really don't know what they were trying to do, but it gets very repetitive very fast, you know, she'll, uh, you know, she'll basically fall asleep at night, and she'll see all these, like, spirits and things like that, and she'll wake up, and nobody's believing her, and then Miles and or Flora do something really creepy, and she's put off by them, but she's not as put off by Flora, because Flora, she has a more endearing relationship with, but then Miles, she's more put off by, and then the, like, uh, caretaker of this house doesn't believe her, and it just gets extremely repetitive. There isn't a lot of story going on here, and that's really my biggest issue with this movie. There's not a lot to really latch onto. There is a very loose story in there about how, you know, her mother has gone mad, and, you know, she's on the verge where Kate's been taking care of her, but even her mother isn't really fully there. You're not even really sure if she's fully there, and then they're trying to make a parallel with her and Kate, but it's a very, very loose end. There's not a lot of uh, connectivity there, and that's my biggest issue with this movie, that I just don't think they laid enough breadcrumbs for any sort of story, for any sort of momentum, because you're just not really interested in what's going on. And when you eventually think you know what's going on, then the movie pulls another 180. And this is where we get to easily the worst thing with this film. The way this movie decides to end... I wouldn't even really call it an ending. This is the most lazily put together third act that I think I might have ever seen in a horror film. The movie ends and you, you know, the movie has this um, notion where you think it's going to end. There's a point where it's like, okay, we're in the climax. I get where this is going. It's not that great. It's fairly predictable, but it's fine. You know, it's nothing too offensively bad. And then halfway through the scene, the movie then just drops you into this other thing, and it throws this other huge, like, uh, twist on you. It takes this turn, and it does not feel earned in the slightest, and I would not have a problem with it if the movie would have done something with it, but it literally just ends. It just ends. There's no wrap-up to anything, and... It was so disappointing to watch. I could not believe how lazily put together this entire thing was. I think it was just... It felt like they generally did not know how to end this movie. And my question is, you know, I don't know if this was like a mandate or if they just was really scrounging for like some kind of ending here and they wanted to be up to the audience's interpretation. But I wouldn't even say it's up to our interpretation because, again, they did not lay enough uh, seed. They did not plant enough seeds to really get us to come to a conclusive explanation of what any of this is supposed to mean. I have an inkling of what they were trying to do, but... But it's just an inkling. It's not an in actual idea. It's not any sort of theory. It's just kind of an inkling because I don't want to believe that they didn't have, uh, they didn't know how to end this movie. I don't want to believe that, but considering the way it wraps up, it very much feels that way. It feels like they just did not know what they wanted to do here, and so they just settled for the laziest ending possible, and it really just brings this entire thing down. And it's one of those scenes where I'm like, I'm watching it, and I'm like, there's, there's no way this is the ending. Like, I even heard that the movie abruptly ended, and yet it was still so shocking to me. It caught me off guard, like, so much, and I have not been that baffled walking out of a movie in so long. I could not believe that this is what they went with. I could not believe that the people editing this movie thought this would be the scene to end on. It just makes everything so much more confusing, and it's legitimately not an ending. I would not call this an ending. I would just call it 
a, a random scene, a random scene that doesn't have, that didn't finish. A, it's an unfinished film in that way. And I just can't believe that the screenwriters and the editors and everyone that put this movie together thought it would be an acceptable way to end this movie. And that's what really brings this entire film down for me. Because, I mean, the cinematography here is not too bad. Nothing really about it sticks out all that much, but... It's really not too bad. There were actually some shots that did look kind of cool overall. Um, the score, though, is terrible. The whole movie takes place in the 90s, and so there's this really obnoxious like rock music playing throughout it, and the score itself tries to kind of correlate with that, and it's it's really bad. I don't know what they were trying to do. There's one, uh, there's one piece that plays in the credits especially that is really bad, and I don't, I don't really know what they were thinking there. And then the editing for this movie it's just way too short. That's easily my biggest issue with it. The movie is way too short. There needed to be a lot less buildup, and there needed to be way more of a point as to what's going on, because at the end of the day, this is not just a horror film that is bad because it's generic. It's not just a horror film that's bad because it isn't doing anything original. It's bad because... I really don't know what the point of it is. This is a film with capable actors. This is a film that could have been something really good, but it didn't seem to have any idea of what it wanted to do with itself. So at the end of the day, it ends up being maybe the most disposable horror film I've seen in a very long time that really just shows how lazily put together that genre can be. I mean, we're getting some really great horror stuff on like the indie circuit, but in terms of mainstream films, I don't think any... January has shown that better than this January between the grudge and this I mean this is just a really badly put together film that could have been so much better but as it is I'm definitely going to give the turning overall a D so over guys to my review of the turning let me know what you guys saw this in the of your thoughts in it oh my god January I just I don't know if I can take it anymore guys we got we got one more week left one more week thankfully and then we can get to the good stuff because this month has been kind of uh, kind of dreadful, honestly. It's honestly been very hard to get through, and I, I hope we have some good stuff in the next week, but I guess we'll have to see. I'm really pulling for Gretel and Hansel to be good, but I don't even really know anymore. But uh, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoy it. We'll see you guys in my next video, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.